Hello people, welcome to Kiriyadid. In today's session, we will be discussing some of the numerical ability question which is more popular in Wipro NLTH. And this is session 2 on Wipro NLTH. I have included the previous session link in description. If you haven't watched, please have a look at it. So here we have the first question. G1 sold his car for rupees 1 lakh less than what he bought it for and lost 8%. At what price would he have sold the car if he wanted to gain as much as he lost in the first transaction? So we know cost price of any product is 100% right? So he lost 8% in it. That means he sold only for 92%. Okay. Now because of this 1 lakh rupees, he lost 8%. Right. So we can say this 8% is nothing but 1 lakh. So he lost 1 lakh and this is equivalent to 8%. Now our question is at what price should he have sold the car if he wanted to gain as much as he lost in the first transaction. So he lost 8% right from cost price 100% he lost 8%. So from the same 100% he have to gain another 8%. That means he have to sell it for 108% right. So you have to find what is 108%. So that is x. We know how to cross multiply. So x equal to 1 lakh upon 8 into 108. So if we solve it, we get the answer. So 1 times 2 times 5 times double 0. So 125 into 108, we get 13500. Right? So it is 135000. This becomes our answer. So if we sell for 1 lakh 30, I mean it is 13 lakh 50,000, we will get same 8 percentage profit. So this becomes our answer. So moving to next question. What are the largest four digit and smallest three digit numbers divisible by 6, 15, 21 and 24? So we have these four numbers. So this four number is divisible by, I mean, uh, these four numbers can divide which largest four digit number and which smallest three digit number. And this is our question. Now we know this answer purely lies in LCM of these numbers, right? So first we have to find this 6, 15, 21 and 24 divides which number? So we can take LCM. So it is 2 times 3, you get 6. 15 can be written as 3 times 5 and 21 can be written as 3 times 7 and 24 can be written as 8 times 3. So 8 can be written as 2 cube into 3. You get 24. Okay. Now we have to write all the factors. So you have 2, right? So write 2 and we have 3, right? So write 3 and we have 5 as well as we have 7. Now we have to write the highest power of 2, 3, 5, 7. So what is the highest power of 2? It is 2 cube. So write 2 power 3. So highest power of 3 is we have 3 power 1 everywhere and highest power of 5 is it is 5 power 1 and highest power of 7 is 7 power 1. So it is 8 cube. I mean 2 cube is 8 into 5 into 3 into 7. So it is 40 into 21. We get 840. So 840 is LCM of 6, 15, 21 and 24. That means this 840 is divisible by 6, 15, 21 and 24. Right. So this is the smallest number which could be divisible by all the four numbers. As well as if you take this 840, this 840 is the smallest three digit number. Now, if you try to take the next number which is divisible by 6, 15, 21 and 24, you have to multiply this 840 by 2. Right, so 840, I mean 840 into 2. So this 840 into 2 is 1680. So this 1680 is the smallest four digit number which is divisible by 6, 15, 21 and 24. But you have to find the largest four digit number. So how to find largest four digit number? The largest four digit number which we know is 9999. So this 9999, if it is divisible by 840, then it is obviously divisible by 6, 15, 21 and 24, right? Because 840 is the number which is purely divisible by 6, 15, 21 and 24, all the numbers together. So we divide this 9999 by 840. So 1 times 840, we get 840. So it is 51599. So again, 1 times 840, we get 840. So we get, yeah, 759. Now we are getting reminder 759. That means this 9999 is 759 extra, right? So excess, so which makes uh, not divisible by 840. So what we can do, we can subtract the 759 from this 9999. So if we subtract, we get 0429. 
So this 9240 is perfectly divisible by 840 and this is the greatest four digit number. So if this 9240 is divisible by 840, then it is obviously divisible by 6, 15, 21, 24, right? So 9240 is the greatest four digit number divisible by these numbers and the smallest three digit number is 840. So answer for this question is option C. Hope you understood the concept. Now moving to next question. A loan of rupees 1 lakh on simple interest is taken for as many years as the rate of interest. If the interest to be paid is rupees 4410, what is the rate of interest? So you borrowed 1 lakh and your number of years, that means your term as well as rate of interest is same and the simple interest you got is 4410. So we can substitute these answers in, I mean the values in formula, simple interest equal to PNR by 100, that's it, right? So principal is 1 lakh. And number of years, we can take it as X and rate of interest is also X. And the simple interest we got is 4,410. So zero, zero cancel and zero and this zero cancel. So X square equal to 441 by 100. So X equal to square root of 441 by 100, we get 21 upon 10. So what is 21 by 10? It is 2.1%. This becomes our answer. So we have two times 2.1, right? So either option C or option D. Right, so answer is 2.1 percent. This becomes our answer. Now moving to next question. Two taps A and B separately fill a tank in 440 minutes and 660 minutes. Together they can fill the tank in. So this question is based on pipes and cisterns. So pipe A can fill the tank in 440 minutes and pipe B can fill the tank in 660 minutes. Do we know what is capacity of the tank? We don't know. So what we can do? What we can do? We can take the LCM of 440 and 660. So LCM of 440 and 660 we get. So 2 times 220 is 440. And 3 times 220 is 660. Right. So we have 220 in common. And we can take this 2 and this 3. So 6 into 220 we get 1320. So our assumption is. 1320 units is the total capacity of the tank. So we are taking the LCM, right? So 1320 is the total capacity of the tank. So tap A fill this 1320 units in 440 minutes. That means in one minute, tap A can fill 1320 by 440. We get three units per minute. And pipe B can fill this 1320 units in 660 minutes. That means in one minute, pipe B can fill 1320 by 660. We get two units per minute. Now, our question is together they can fill the tank in. So, together they are 3 plus 2, 5 times efficient, right? So, 3 plus 2, 5 units they will fill together. So, totally we have 1320 units. And it will be filled with the efficiency 5 units per minute in how many minutes? So if we cancel this 2 times and 6 times and 4 times. So in 264 minutes. Right. But you have to write the answers in hours. So how to convert uh, these 264 minutes in hours? So we can divide it by 60 or we know 1 hour is 60 minutes. So 2 hours is 120 minutes. 4 hours is 240 minutes. Right. So 4 hours is 240 minutes. So what we have is 264 minutes. So extra we have to add another 24 minutes. So 4 hours and 24 minutes is our answer. This becomes our answer. Right. So instead of dividing this 264 by 60 and converting it to minutes, we can better uh, calculate in your mind. So it is 4 hours and 24 minutes. This becomes our answer. So moving to next question. If LCM and HCF of two numbers are 117 and 13 respectively, then the smallest factors of product of the two numbers is TAS. Okay, so again this question is based on properties of LCM and HCF. So what is the property? We know product of any two numbers is equivalent to the product of its LCM and HCF. That is product of any two numbers is equivalent to the product of its LCM and HCF. So we have the LCM and HCF here. So what is it? 117 into 11. I mean 117 into 13. Right. So LCM into HCF is nothing but product of these two numbers. Now you have to find the smallest factor of this product. So the smallest factor of any number is nothing but 1 only. Right. So if you take 2. So 2 is divisible by 1 and 2. So the smallest factor is 1. If you take 1000, the smallest factor is 1 only. But you can't calculate 1 and that is not given in the option. 
So we can write this 117 as 3 into 39, right? And this 39 can be written as 3 into 13. And this 13 can be written as 1 into 13. So 3 into 3 into 13 into 13 is nothing but 117 into 13, right? So what is the smallest factor in it? 3, right? So 3 is the smallest factor that divides the LCM and HCF of the two numbers 117 and 13. So answer is 3. So this is the smallest factor that divides the product of these two numbers. Okay, now moving to next question. Car A covers a distance of 420 km in 4 hours and car B covers a distance of 550 km in 5 hours. What is the average speed of the cars? So if you want to find average speed, we know the structure is total distance by total time. Right, so average speed is nothing but total distance divided by total time. So this is average speed formula, right? So what is the total distance? 420 plus 550. So we get 970. And what is the total time we have? 4 plus 5 is 9 hours. So 970 by 9, how much we get? So 1 times 9 and 0. And this will be 7, 9, so 63. Okay, again we have 7. Keep a decimal 0 and again 7. It's so it will go on 107.7. Okay, so we can say answer is 107.5 kilometer per hour. So we are getting 107.7. So approximately we can say it is 107.5 kilometer per hour. So average speed formula is total distance by total time. Hope you understood this problem. So we shall go to next question. Log 0 0.2 to the base 5 is equal to dash. So how can we solve? So log 0 0.2 can be written as log 2 by 10 to the base 5. So log 2 by 10 is nothing but 1 by 5. So this 1 by 5 is equivalent to 5 power minus 1, right? So we can write log of 5 power minus 1 to the base 5. So this minus 1 will be moved to uh, moved before log. So you get minus 1 into log of 5 to the base 5. So what is log of 5 to the base 5? 1, right? So minus 1 into 1 is nothing but minus 1. So answer for this question is minus 1. Hope you understood how to solve this problem. Okay, moving to next question. An investment earns 8 pies per rupee invested if at the end of the year. The interest earned by an investment is rupees 100. Then the investment is equal to. So for the investment 1 rupee, we are getting the interest 8 pies. Now we are getting interest 100 rupees. Then what is the investment equal to? So this is our question. So actually this question is not based on any interest calculation. So it is purely based on the cross multiplication, right? So it is purely based on numbers, arithmetic. So we get interest 8 pies when the investment is 1 rupee. So 1 rupee is 100 pies, right? So when the investment is 100 pies, we get 8 pies interest. So when the interest is 100 rupees, right? So we are getting interest 100 rupees. Then what is the investment? So when the interest is 100 rupees, then what is the investment? This is our question. So simply cross multiply, we get the answer. So if you cross multiply, you get uh, how much? So it is 25 times and this is, so we have two and this is 50 times. So 50 into 25, we get the answer. So it is 12520. This becomes our answer. So for the investment 1250 rupees, we get 100 rupees interest. This becomes our answer. Hope you understood how to solve these problems. In upcoming session, I will add some more problems related to Bipro NLTH. Until that, stay connected with Career Deed and 